Welcome to Retro Upgrade. This time we'll be looking at the controller Richard from Learner Electronics Repair challenged me to fix. We did this in the electronics channel when we had the live stream last Sunday. Here's a clip for context. Okay, so guys, it's time to challenge Carlos. Oh crap. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always fun. Uh, they, they haven't told me about it. Oh yeah, John. No, you know nothing about this. I'll tell them what about it first before you say anything, yeah? I'll give you the history, the backstory. So, a customer brought me this in. Okay? And he says, ah. that, he says that these buttons, these shoulder buttons, as he calls them, yeah. are intermittent. Okay. You have to press hard to get them to work. I know what's wrong with it. Okay, right. <laughs> I can't <laughs> even get into this thing. This is now Elite 2 or something? Yeah, th th these are uh, uh, fairly expensive, 70 euros or something. I think it was 120 or something. Okay, so he bought the, the expensive uh, special... Uh, it's just, it feels like, well, Carlos... Rub rubberized... Yeah, over okay. to you. I can't even open that up. Okay, let's see. So these are the new ones. If you haven't watched the Electronics channel yet, uh, give it a chance. It's really fun. We ask, uh, answer questions from the viewers and uh, have a lot of fun there and do some cool projects. Here's a word from my sponsor. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. At PCBWay, they specialize in providing high quality printed circuit boards, PCBs, for a variety of applications from 3D printing to sheet metal fabrication. They are offering a special deal Get 10 PCBs for $5. So don't wait any longer. Visit PCB Way today and start ordering your next project with confidence. Use the link in the video description below. Order now and start creating. Now back to the video. Okay, so this is the Elite 2 Pro Controller from Microsoft. It's really well built. Uh, the problem with this one is uh, the shoulder buttons are intermittent or you have to press really hard to make them work. I tested them off camera on an application in Windows. I'll show you that later. And uh, it's correct. It, it, they don't really react. The rest of the controller seems to be working fine, but the right and left shoulder button, especially the right one, is broken. Uh, for opening this controller, uh, I checked the iFixit guide and uh, you need a lot of spudgers, <laughs> so that's what I got. I use uh, the guitar pick looking things and some spudgers. Uh, they recommended to force it from the shoulder button uh, right there. There are a few uh, clips all along the way. Uh, I'll uh, mark them out for you in a little while so you don't break anything. And I don't think it's a good idea to pry from the actual button because there is a small hinge le like thing that holds it in place and if you break that it's game over pretty much. So what you need to do instead is get one of these guitar picks and pull to the side like I'm doing now instead of actually wedging it. So that lifts up the corner and you can wedge in. You should go in on a 45 degree angle because the clips are uh, facing the back of the controller so it's better to force it in that way and uh, you have to do both sides at the same time because there is some adhesive inside so you need to force it off uh, it's not a lot but it's more than enough uh, the middle of the controller is clipped but uh, it's missing somehow uh, it's they're farther in the clips on the middle of the controller so go for the sides instead I got one side open, I'm trying to pull it apart but yeah, no luck. So this is the first time for me fixing the, one of these. This is a voiceover video by the way because I didn't record any voice because this was in the middle of the night. I s slow and gentle with these things. That's why Richard couldn't open it, he was afraid he would break it. And uh, I do agree, this one was a pain to get into. Okay, so it just keep going until you get one side loose and you can wedge in one of the spudgers. Uh, like I said, it, uh, this takes a little bit of patience and care, but I didn't want to cut the video here so you can see how annoyingly tight this is. Now you can see inside. 
I'll put a spudger in and wedge a bit. There is a clip right there. I didn't know that at the time though. So. <laughs> there are eight clips in total, so there are a lot of them. I'm trying to see if I can hear the snapping sound. I'm really careful around the shoulder button. I'm taking off the magnetic caps. These are really nicely made. They don't fall off during gameplay, so that's really cool. And uh, I'll keep going. Uh, I thought maybe you could take off these pieces first uh, on the top. But uh, later on I'll show you that there are two clips a lot farther in. It's really hard to get to. So it's better to, to do the sides or, or the bottom piece instead. I have it mostly apart now because both sides are almost open. I'm using the other one now. It gets uh, progressively easier when you get one side open. As you can see on the other side, I, have, I still have the guitar pick wedged in. You can actually use real guitar picks. They're really hard and slippery, so they're perfect for this. You just keep going really slowly, hopefully you won't get too frustrated with this. It is coming apart, it's just hard to film because I have to hold it flat on the table so it doesn't close up on me all the time. And yeah, I know this is boring, but uh, bear with me a little while. I cut off uh, most of the parts where I didn't do anything. So yeah, I'm showing here that you have to wedge it 45 degrees, otherwise you won't get to the clips. Now I'm getting somewhere. And this should come off. You pull really slowly because there is some adhesive inside, just in case. You'll see it in a moment. It's finally open. As you can see, there is some black adhesive right there. Don't worry about it too much. It's not necessary. It's really wedged in there. So I'm just checking the controller to, just to look at it inside because I've never been in one. And looks the uh, bog standard uh, tack switches for the shoulder buttons. So I'm lifting up the corners here so I can check out the plastic, see if it's not uh, a broken piece in the plastic instead of the actual button that's making it. Uh, these buttons are molded or, or yeah molded together so both left and right button are actually stuck together so there are some small nubs these go over so you have to pry them off not really hard but it still takes a while I'm just lifting off the other side so it doesn't clip in it's a little annoying but Still, just be patient and do it slowly. Don't put too much force. It looks like I'm putting a lot of force, but I am not. <laughs> I want to loosen it from the top so the USB-C port gets free and the sync button as well. Uh, not because I want to see those, but because the actual buttons are attached to it. So there we go. Came off really easily, let's say. <laughs> Okay, I'm inspecting the button here. It's a recessed uh, tack switch, nothing special. Uh, this is why I wanted to check this piece, is because it's actually a flexing plastic piece. And I can see it's actually separated in two parts. The lid on the top and the actual spring button. So it's a plastic spring, so if this fails, Usually that misaligns the click and uh, that makes it unresponsive. You can see it came apart there. Not too hard uh, to put it back together. So I'm just checking to remember, see if I can. But I didn't find any plastic pieces that were broken, so I put it back. This is a 99% isopropyl alcohol. Richard ordered from AliExpress and it actually came through the mail. Yeah, that's incredible. So let's see. I'm out of alcohol, so I'm going to fill up my little trusty spray bottle. I'm, I won't be spraying this one, uh, just because I don't want uh, to leave it to dry for an hour. So, 
the technique here is dropping in I IPA, but not too much, so you drown the entire board underneath. There's a circuit board underneath. I picked this apart later to clean it off completely, but I didn't do that on camera because it's out of, out of the scope of this video. And I'm just doing the right one because that was the worst one. So what you need to do here is actually click the button a load of times. Uh, I'll uh, do a small demonstration with uh, some some pictures so you can see exactly what's happening and why it works because it's counterintuitive it's a sealed button and uh, how does the IPA actually get in <laughs> but uh, I'll show you that in a moment okay so this is actually the only thing you need to do is just press the button while the the tax switch is wet, uh, wet with uh, IPA you need to repeat this a couple of hundred times yeah, I know it sounds a lot, but it goes really fast if you click a lot. This works really well, actually. I've done this on multiple controllers. Every controller type that has tax switches, this will work on. It's not just a pro controller. Now for a small demonstration on why this works. I'm using some pictures from the web just because uh, it's easier to explain. Let's go. Okay, so let's talk about why this works and uh, dri dripping down some uh, IPA on the side of the contact and it still gets fixed. So let's pick one of these. This one is probably the best one. Let's see here. It's not the same type of tactile switch, but they work the same nonetheless. Okay, so let's zoom in here a bit. Okay, so the switch is comprised like this uh, and it ha you can uh, ignore the film that's usually not there but the rest is accurate so you have the button and you can see it lines up here with a lip usually the button rests on this small spring loaded diaphragm thingy it's a small domed piece and the problem we have here is that the uh, carbon that builds up is right here so it's under this diaphragm so if I drip uh, IPA from here and it should just stay on the on the button it should not seep in some some will get in there eventually uh, because of capillary action and stuff but the motion of pressing the button makes this a small pump so every time you push it down the air displacement gets smaller inside the cavity and when you let it go it sucks in some of the, some of the air and that also does uh, when you push it down this slip goes a little bit down and the fluid can seep in a little bit so if you keep pushing it and uh, letting go it's like a small pump so you're sucking in the IPA underneath and it and the motion of actually the dome touching the contacts that's how the the bridge is made it uh, cleans it as well so that's why this works okay let's go back to the video okay so i remember that i could zoom in on my overhead camera so you get a little better picture this time and you just need to repeat this uh, like I said uh, a couple of hundred times but just just keep dropping in some IPA and if you're smart uh, you, you test the controller before you put it back together because it's such a pain to pull it apart I did both buttons uh, I won't show both of them of course because it's just a boring video then one is enough and I this is actually real time you can see how much IPA was in inside the controller right now it's not a huge amount, but it's enough for it to take a while to dry. Okay, so let's hook it up to the computer and see if that fix it, fixed it. This is Xbox uh, or Microsoft controller tester. It's a really handy tool, especially for Xbox controllers. It detected it immediately, so that's good. I'll test everything out. The sticks are fine. Uh, this is really not necessary because I tested it before I pulled it apart but of course you can actually break something when you pull it apart so better to be safe than sorry I guess 
I left the best for last and that's the shoulder buttons. I really like the feel of this controller and time for the shoulder buttons then they respond really nicely so before I had to push with practically all my might with the fingers just to get it to react so th this is really good and I do like the clicky nature of the attack buttons uh, it helps a lot and you can see here it's pre pretty responsive so that's really good uh, this is considered fixed for me of course I fixed the other one off camera and I actually picked it apart and cleaned cleaned off everything inside but like I said out of scope of this video <laughs> it would get way too long okay so pull, putting back the uh, front was a little bit of a hassle you just had to be patient and let it align itself now and it should just snap together and you should ju just check the seam so it's okay now because uh, I, I don't know if I pinched something or or if I screwed up something when I put it back together so I'll test it again just to make sure and yeah some cleaning uh, it's a, a game a gamer control for a kid that plays competitively so <laughs> and these are expensive uh, it's about a hundred euros if you want a new one and that's just the base kit there's a uh, some uh, special editions that have uh, 140 150 euros okay so let's test this again same procedure test all the buttons so i haven't pinched a button or something get uh, stays pressed or something and of course if the tax switches still work or the shoulder buttons i'll check ebay to see if i can find a broken one of these and buy one to fix one because they are really nice in the hand I think these are for the Xbox one if I'm not mistaken maybe they are for the new uh, series X and S thank you for watching until the end we'll be continuing with the uh, GBS control next time and I'll be testing a lot of consoles see you then bye